God is good. And all the time, God is good. You see, we are having a medical missionary training here daily. And um, the servant of the Lord said that every Seventh-day Adventist should become a medical missionary. But not just Seventh-day Adventist. I believe that every Christian should become a medical missionary. Because when Christ was here and he heard, did you know that he healed far more than how he teaches? And uh, this is it. Whenever you, most persons, they don't even want God right now. But they want to live long, don't it? They want to be healthy. Both the rich and the poor want to live long and they want to, to be healthy. But healing does not come from us. Who, who does it come from? From God. And this message, this health message, it breaks down barrier. It takes you to a place where you'll never go. You never, you, you, you never think that you'll reach there. Even while I was coming here, and I was in Miami, and um, when I reached, um, well, as Jamaica and I heard some things about coming in England for Jamaican that was not too pretty. So I was saying to myself while coming up, man, I wonder if I'm going to make it through, but I stopped wondering because I know in whom I serve, but sometimes as Jamaican, we get a little asked that time. But I remember coming through and an and a immigration officer Say, um, so what are you going to London to do? That, that was in Miami. What are you going to London? I said, well, um, I'm a health missionary. He said, what is that? So I said, do you know that every disease on the face of the herd is 100% reversible without using any form of drug medication? He said, you mean prostate cancer? I said, yes. He said, tell me how to reverse it. Now, there was a long line behind me of person waiting. And here is it that I am like in front of you people telling him from, pint, from A to B, and he's there writing down, writing down, writing down, and he looked out the line and saw the queue out there, and he said, um, put your, your, your fingers here, and I put it there, and said, okay, tell me about diabetes now. And I was there lecturing her, after telling from point A to B, how to reverse diabetes, how to reverse um, prostate, he said, what's your name? He said, hold on a minute, and he looked on the screen, and said, I got you, I got you, you'll hear from me. So I'm just saying to your brethren that, this message breaks down barrier. Amen? Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We're praying. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before your children once again. We ask, Lord, that you hide me behind you, that your words will be heard and high. These are the things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to let you know that we have what? Precious, precious information that when adhered to, it saves lives. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Saints, our topic of discussion is, are you ready? We're talking about the number one killer in the UK. What are we talking about? High cholesterol. Hero or villain? From what we have seen that cholesterol is a hero, and it's not a villain, even though it's the number one killer here in the UK. Do you know that if you practice a good, healthy lifestyle and you eat a meal that is high in cholesterol um, at least once a week or once every two weeks, it ne negatively affects your cholesterol level for the next two weeks? Did you know that? So if for some reason they decide, okay, I'm going to follow what Brother Luke say, but I'm going to celebrate once a week or once every two weeks with, you know, a little piece of fish, especially the Escovich fish, you, you know, or maybe a little piece of chicken. Just by doing that, it will keep your cholesterol level elevated for the next two weeks. Butter. When butter is placed on bread, it elevates your cholesterol level by 20%. So saints, follow me. Let's say your cholesterol is 200, and you decide to just put a little butter on the bread. Several hours later, what would the cholesterol level be? Come on, saints. Several hours later, what would the cholesterol level be? 240. Are you with me? So if you practice helpful living, and you follow the information that we put out, you never have to worry about that because we can teach you how to make healthy butter 
where that will not be an issue. Amen? Thank you. Can someone who is a vegetarian have high cholesterol? And by saying this now, I'm going to tie in last night's topic with what we're discussing. Remember what we talked about? Come on, saints. Remember, come on, saints. Remember, we talked about does, come on, avocado, does zabuka, does butter pear. What are we talking about? Avocado. Does it have cholesterol? The answer is no. Can it increase the cholesterol if you abuse it? The answer is yes. We're going to explain that to you. Does coconut have cholesterol? The answer is no. But if you abuse it, can you increase the cholesterol level? The answer is yes. We're going to show you how that's done. Okay? So the question is asked, can a vegan vegetarian have high cholesterol? What's the answer to that question? Yes. If they overindulge in that which is good. Instead of having maybe like a handful or so of nuts, they decide to do the hand so. Open it, catch it against them, that it can get a little extra. Or they decide just take the, the, the pan, maybe put between their leg or put on their desk, so in that way they're using a little bit more than they should. And I'll show you how it can actually do that, okay? I'll explain that to you. When you overindulge on excessive fats, be it oils, plant-based oils, be it nuts, be it coconut, be it um, any item that is high in fats, avocado, what happened, it sends a signal to the liver. And it says, liver, I have excessive amount of fats that is coming into the system. Can you make some cholesterol? Take the cholesterol and make some bile salts to help to break down the excessive fats to facilitate digestion. Come on. Are you with me? Did you guys follow me? Let me ask you a question. Can water, does water and oil mix together? Water and oil separates, right? If I want water and oil to come together, what do I need to use? I need to use an emulsifier. Give me the name of an emulsifier that allows water and, come on, oil to work together. Like soap. Come on, say soap. Soap would be an emulsifier. There's oil on my hand, and I'm trying to use water to wash it off. It will not come off, but if I use soap, which is an emulsifier, all of a sudden I'm able to get off the oil. Am I making sense? So naturally, guess what? The fats will separate from what? In, 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 the fats will separate. Fats will separate from water. Fats will separate from basically anything you put it with. So you need an emulsifier to actually cause it to stay together. Are you with me? I'll tell you something. I make butter. I can use olive oil and coconut oil, liquor salt, and you know, if you want to season it up, like an onion powder, like a garlic powder. And I can take that and put together to make a butter. But, and, and I'll put a little water in there. But guess what happened? It separates. Even though when I whip it, whip it real fast, it still separates. So guess what I do? I put an emulsifier in by the name of what? Lecithin granules. And what lecithin granules do, it allows both the fats, you know, the, the oils, and the water to come together without separating, and it makes a nice butter. Am I making sense this, saints? So, I'm, I'm making butter, amen. So, what you need, you need something to allow the fats to come together in the body where it does not want, separate. So, guess what does that? Bile salts, and that is stored where? In the gallbladder. But the gallbladder is not a big organ. So, here's what happened. If you bring in excessive amount of fats, you will deplete all of the bile in the gallbladder. So when the gallbladder realizes that it's going to be depleted, it sends a, liver, a signal to the liver, hey, I need help. And the liver says, okay, you need extra bile salts, not a problem. Manufacture cholesterol, 
take the cholesterol, make the bile salts for the gallbladder to help digest the excessive fats. Am I making sense to you? So now, instead of, let's say someone, instead of them eating maybe a slice of avocado, they decide to get the one that we have back home. Them big galanka chanka one, real big. Them the one the little hoss. You know the little hoss? You just throw it up like a penny mango, just throw it up and just catch it. Then the one that type. What type the one? The big galanka chanka one, the purple ones them. That when you just go up, you can just smell it. They want to just cut them. some of them, they're so nice, you just see the fat just to come out of them, nice and fat. When they're spread, you just see the juice just running down your side of the mouth. Mercy. So, follow me here. When, instead of them eating the little, small little house one, they want the big, nice one that grows in the Caribbean, the big galanka chanka. And now, instead of eating maybe just a slice, they say, boy, we can just deal with the whole case. So they just eat half the whole thing. And maybe now if you just eat half one, they're going to lick a second one because they're in the heart of the season. And then guess what happened now? Too much fats for the body to handle all at once. So immediately now, what does the body have to do? It has to now, the liver now, produces what? Cholesterol. Take the cholesterol, make bile salts, send that to the liver now, send that to the gallbladder, that it can actually use that as a means of actually breaking down and digesting the excessive amount of fats that you would have ingested by eating too much of a good thing. Am I making sense there? Is that clear, saints? So now, does avocado have cholesterol? Come on, does avocado have cholesterol? No, but avocado has what? Fats, it is high in fats. Fats and cholesterol, two different things. But if you abuse fats, excessive amount of fats can cause an increase in cholesterol even though the item does not have cholesterol. Am I making sense, saints? So when you have individuals that say, avocado have cholesterol, they're wrong. Avocado has what? No cholesterol. Coconut has what? No cholesterol. What coconut has? It is high in fats, and excessive consumption of fats will cause the liver to produce ex, um, additional cholesterol to make the bile salts to help with the breakdown of the excessive fats. If that's clear, you say amen. Good. Different things can cause an increase in cholesterol. Stress. Remember we talked about what the... Um, what lip the cholesterol is good for? We talk about cholesterol is actually used to make the hormone that fight what? Stress. So if someone is on a tremendous amount of stress, even though they're total plant-based pasta, they eat no fish, chicken, turkey, beef, or pork, shrimp, lobster, corn, crab, butter, eggs, ice cream, cheese, or animal milk, they consume none of those items, but they're on a tremendous amount of stress, guess what happened? The body now say, listen, too much stress, make the hormone called what? Cortisol to help break down or deal with excessive stress. So all of a sudden now, you see that, that hormone? That hormone is being used by the body to help control your stress. But just because you're under tremendous stress, you will cause the liver to manufacture extra cholesterol and that cholesterol will continue to climb even though you're consuming no flesh. If you're one that likes a lot of thrills, you know, like you want theme parks, you go into these scary rides, you go, you know, like the movie theater, you like those scary movies, that can cause you to have high cholesterol. How does it cause you? The thrill, you, you know what I mean? The scare, the fright. That fight or flight hormone, adrenaline, guess what? Who will cause that issue? The same thing again, same problem you're going to run into. The body now is going to produce that adrenaline to help deal with the fight or flight type situation. You have several carriers. You have both something called HDL as well as the LDL.
Another item that plays a major role with cholesterol is triglycerides. What happened with triglycerides? Triglycerides will bind with, with cholesterol and can cause you to either have a heart attack or stroke. So you need to make sure that both your HDL, LDL are in line. Now, saints, I kind of skipped over the values, but I'll give you the values. But you guys do a little conversion, a little different conversion over here. So I'll just give you the U.S. values, and then we can do a conversion with that. For the HDL for male, we want the HDL for male to be at least 40 and above. For women, you want it to be at least 50 and above. We found that women have a higher risk of heart disease than men, and as a result, they need a little bit more protection. For male now, we found that when the HDL, which is considered quote-unquote good cholesterol, gets about 70, it actually protects the heart. Now, let's go over to the LDL now. With the LDL, you want that to be 130 and below. However, for optimum health, you want that to be less than 90. Now, saints, follow me here. If the LDL was bad, like how everybody say it is, it should have had a zero value. Am I making sense here? If LDL was bad... The value of LDL should have been what, Elder? Zero. The fact that it has a value lets you know that there's a role it plays in one's health. Based on the Framingham study, they found that when cholesterol level is 150 milligrams per deciliter and below, there have never been one recorded incidence of a heart attack. Are you with me, saints? This is the number one killer in the UK. This very topic we're talking about. This is the number one killer. But guess what? If we can get your cholesterol level at about 150 milligrams per deciliter, the risk of you having a heart attack is almost non-existent. Am I making sense, saints? What is man's best food? Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our Creator. These food prepared in as simple and natural a manner as possible are the most helpful and nourishing. In grains, saints, I love these quotes. Listen to this quote. In grains, fruits, vegetables, and nuts, are to be found all the food elements that we need. Don't let anybody ever fool you and tell you that a plant-based diet is not complete. What diet is not complete is an animal-based diet because whatever nutrients you're getting from an animal, you're getting it secondhand. The nutrients go to the eater. Always remember that. Whoever eat first, they get the majority of the nutrients. Okay? Always remember that. If you remember that, you'll not be disappointed. Let me give you some statistics here, and you'll be amazed. And I'll tell you a story about this statistic, this very first one. I was in Antigua, and one of our first elders heard of this statistics. He got so excited, he began eating about, a bag of, about two to three bags of nuts like this every day. His cholesterol went to the roof, and he had a heart attack, almost died. He called me. I went to his home, and I sat him down, and I said, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, Elder, listen, when it talked about vegetarians who use nuts at least five times a week reduce the risk of heart disease by 50%, it didn't mean that you go ahead and eat two to three or even four bags of nuts every day. It just means that you do what? A closed fist. Upside down is all you take for breakfast and lunch and nothing for supper. He says, you're kidding me, Brother Luke. I said, I kid you not. I said, listen to the council. It says, 
Care should be taken, however, not to use too large a portion of nuts. That's the counsel. But he misinterpreted the research and thought that the more nuts you eat, the better it would be for you, when in actuality, it actually caused him to have a heart attack. That's how two individuals could be eating the same thing, but because of the way they are consuming it, it could be the difference between life and debt. Same item, used wrongly, can cost you your life. They did the test with 34,000 um, California Adventists for 25 years, and this is one of the conclusions they came to. I love this test, this research that I'm about to share with you. Um, it's one of the best um, research that I've seen out there. And listen to what it says. Dr. Caldwell S. Stein, Jr., he did an 11-year study. He st studied the effects of whole foods, plant-based diet on people with established coronary disease with little cholesterol low in medication. The goal was to reduce blood cholesterol level to 150 milligrams per deciliter or below. He had a total of about, I think it was 24 patients he started out with. And by the time he outlaid, that just began to outline the details of the program. No fish, chicken, turkey, beef, pork, and stuff like that. Someone said to him, hold tight, daddy, hold tight. Don't want to be ya. And it says, they're gone. They didn't want to go on that type of program. But praise God that 18 of that 24 decided to hold on. Between those 18 people, they had about 49 different coronary events, be it angina, bypass, heart attack, balloon, you name it. They had it all. Okay? Their average cholesterol level was 246 milligrams per deciliter. According to the American Heart Association, they would like to see a cholesterol less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. However, between 150 and 200, people still have heart attacks. But based on the Framingham study, individuals that get their cholesterol level less than 150 milligrams per deciliter have never once had any recorded incidents of a heart attack. Are we making sense here, saints? So what would your goal be to do? Get that level below 150 and below because there had never been one recorded incidence of a heart attack. Let me share this with you. Came here, met a young man. Young man, um, I think he's in his 40s, early 40s, something like that. Three strokes. Blood sugar to the roof. Pressure to the roof. Cholesterol to the roof. We put him on the program. Says within a couple of days, the gentleman off of all his diabetic medication. Let me ask you a question. If I can bring him here to give a testimony for you when I do diabetes, how many guys would like to hear testimony from someone who has been through the storm? Amen. I'm going to ask that young man to see if he can just, whatever he can do with his schedule, cut it short and be here tomorrow evening when we break loose this thing on diabetes. Because saints, let me tell you something. When we work with people who are diabetic, in 10 days or less, by God's grace, they give up all that drug medication. Saints, let me tell you, diabetes is so easy to reverse that I can work with it anyhow you want. Sunny side up, sunny side down, sunny side all around. How do you want it? We can work with it with the herbs. We can do it with the drugs. We can do it no herbs. And we can still get the reversal. We don't need herbs to even reverse diabetes. Whatever you have in your house, I can use everything you have in your house and reverse your diabetes. Lick it for six. By God's grace. Am I making sense, saints? Saints, so I'm sharing this with you. Tomorrow night, whatever you do, I don't want to see any of these seats empty. Because by the time the lecture is finished, you'd have regret that you didn't bring your friends or family members. And you need to use the principle that we shared. Two friends, two family members. Each person that is here Bring two friends, two family members. If you do that, what a blessing you'll offer to your friends. This, this topic that we're dealing with right now is the number one killer in the UK. And look here. You guys didn't even bring your friends. Follow me. Look at this. 
What did he propose? What changes? They're going to use whole plant foods eaten whole. They're going to avoid what? They're going to avoid oils and they'll be placed on a plant-based diet. Okay? After five years, he got some research from a gentleman named T. Colin Campbell that show that even a little milk will cause the problem. So he says, okay, everything gone. Milk, yogurt, everything gone. Let me show you what happened. What's the result? After, after 11 years, all 18 patients still there. One of the patients cheated and said, look, Mawama, meat kind. He went out, had a heart attack, and he turned around and run, come right back. And let me tell you something, even after he come back, look at the average cholesterol of all of them, dropped to 132 milligrams per deciliter, less than 150, based on the research, what does it say? When your cholesterol level gets below 150, your risk of having a heart attack is virtually zero. Yes, please. Amen. Thank you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I had a lovely young lady. She did the conversion for me. So 150 milligrams per deciliter is equivalent to 3.879 millimoles. Okay? So basically, you want your numbers to be at what? 3.879 millimoles and below. If you get it at that level, by God's grace, never once um, have they had any documented cases of heart attacks. Is the, is, my dear, is the conversion um, 38, 38.9 or something like that? What is the conversion? Is it 38.9? What is it? Okay. C convert the, c convert the, the five for me. I think the five will show up at about 200, the same as the U.S. I think the, the five that you just said, so keep it on the five, I think the conversion would be equivalent to 200. Okay. Right. Okay? Are we making sense so far, saints? I thank God for that lovely young lady who did the conversion that I can give you your UK numbers. Now, watch me here, saints. You see this gentleman? He actually worked next door to Dr. T. Colin Campbell. And as he worked next door and he saw all the research, he's a heart specialist. He saw all the research that was taking place. He had a heart attack. You want to know what his cholesterol level was? 156 milligrams per deciliter. Six point above the limit. But still, according to what the American Heart Association is saying, and what they're saying here in the UK, he was within the normal limit. He was safe. But yet still, he had a heart attack. Being in the medical industry, he says, tell you what, there's nothing that conventional medicine can do for me. That's what he said. Huh? Okay. They did the conversion for me. Thank you, ladies. The 200 milligrams per deciliter is equivalent to 5.172 millimoles. Okay? So, below, the U.S. is saying below 200 milligrams per deciliter, and the U.K. is actually saying below 5 millimoles per liter. Okay? Which means that the U.K. is slightly a little bit more conservative, but yet still, it needs to be less than what? 150 milligrams per deciliter or 3.879 millimoles per liter. Am I making sense so far, saints? Okay, follow me here. What did this gentleman do? Says, I want to tell you what he did. He got on the plan. He got on the plan. He went to what? Whole plant foods eaten whole. He became 100% vegan. 100%. He took, and listen what he did. He took what? No cholesterol lowering medication. Says, follow me. If you have ha heart disease, if you have high cholesterol, at the current rate you're at right now, in order for you to get a different result, you have to do something different. If you keep on doing the same thing 
over and over, the result is the same. You know, a lot of people said to me, Brother Luke, I just eat fish and I don't eat it often. I said, praise the Lord. Thank you for telling me that. Because follow me. If a little piece of fish you eat and the cholesterol is still high from the little piece of fish, imagine if you had eat more. Huh? So follow me what I'm saying. It says, get rid of the little piece. Hmm? Fish have the same amount of cholesterol as red meat. There ain't no difference between 40 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. Roughly between the same range, depending on the type. Look what happened with this young man. Have you guys ever heard of the term angiogenesis? Angiogenesis is where blood vessels have the ability to regenerate themselves when placed in the right condition. The gentleman went on a plant-based diet and listen what he did. He began eating the fruits and the vegetables. Like when he do the vegetables, like the lettuce. And what that does, you see that chlorophyll? It helps repair the inner lining of the blood vessels, the endothelium. The inner lining of the blood vessels. And you know what they found? Like if you eat like olives, if you have established heart disease, the olives have an antioxidant in it that as soon as you begin to eat it, it stops the progression of plaque in the artery and begin to remove it from the arterial wall. That's why they found that the Italians have by far the best arterial wall because of the fact they utilize the olives. Follow me. 32 months, his cholesterol dropped to what? 89 milligrams per deciliter. You guys want to see what happened to this young man? I've always been told that, you know, they said a picture is worth what? A thousand words. Saints, remember I told you guys about this angiogenesis thing? I can speak all I want. But if you don't see the power of plant, you'll never know. Watch. This is what happened. Visual A. When the gentleman had the heart attack, the meat kind, the fish, chicken, turkey, beef, pork, shrimp, lobster, conch, crab, butter, eggs, ice cream, cheese, and animal milk. Especially these pastries, where they use the hydrogenated oils and stuff like that, where it breaks blood vessels. Look what it did. Break away and completely deteriorated that blood vessel. Look at it. Can't even stent something like this. Put, put a balloon in there. Can't even do anything like that. Rotten it away completely. The gentleman began eating fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables. Constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. These food prepared in as simple and natural a manner as possible are the most helpful and nourishing. What he began doing, look. Nice and fat. Look at that. Says, follow me. Look at this. Heart attack. Made the changes. In less than three years, the artery returned back to that of a child. Look at that. Nice, fat, plump. Come on, saints. Doesn't that look good? Come, saints. Work with me, no man. That not look good? Yes. Huh? The power of plant. When Christ worked through these plants, you sit back and watch the glory of God. Watch this. Give you a different angle. Different angle. There it is again. There's the damage. There's the damage. Went to the plant-based diet. Look how nice, fat, and plump that is. You can't do that in the medical industry. There's nothing, no technology in the medical industry to do such thing. This is truth. This is perfect truth. This is uncompromising truth. Says what you get out there is not even partial truth. It's untruth. This is truth. Says, let me share, ask you a question. Have you ever considered changing your diet? Have you ever considered? Listen good. If you want a different result, 
you have to do something different than what you're currently doing. Am I making sense to you? It's not only dietarily, it's spiritually too. It's both. If you're sick and tired of doing the same thing over and over, do something different. Normally, I'll have Sister Nash tell her own story. But she's not here tonight, and I know she has given me permission to tell her story. So, Sister Jovan, please forgive me as I tell the story. Amen. This is Sister Natalie's and Sister Jovan's dad. At the age of 66 years, for 32 years, he was total vegetarian, consumed no flesh items of any source. What he consumed was cheese. He loved cheese. He used milk, cheese, eggs, butter, and ice cream. This is what Sister Nash Put up there. I have to put the disclaimer up because, you know, Sister Dia. Yeah, amen? I got to make sure I tread softly, tread the right way. Am I making sense, Elder Daniel? Yeah. And Sister Nash said that this was the diet of Daddy. She says one day he went to the hospital after having a heart attack, and what they found is that four of the arteries to the heart was blocked. While he was there at the hospital, he had a second heart attack. The second heart attack was so powerful that it actually broke the sack open that hold the, the heart in place. In no time, he actually died right then and there. This is another friend of ours. Now, saints, follow me here. Follow me here. What did he eat? Milk, cheese, eggs, butter, and ice cream. The man not eating a meat kind. He's not eating any meat kind. But guess what? You saw the result. Saints, some of you guys may not be eating any flesh, but you're eating the byproduct. Same thing. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you guys this much. One egg is one whole chicken. So if you eat two eggs, you just eat two whole chicken. That's why one egg has 250 milligrams of cholesterol when the legal limit is 300. So if you eat two eggs, you're already exceeded and you're gone. Another gentleman, 56 years of age, good friend of ours, friend of the evangelists and both revivalists too. Been a vegetarian for what? Over 30 years. But what he love? Cheese again. Saints, you see that cheese? It's the leading cause of blockage of the arterial wall. It's the leading cause of making men not being able to serve their wife. If you want to take a man livelihood, give you cheese. And all of a sudden, the man is not able to serve the way he's supposed to serve. I remember one man had a problem, and I'm going to help you, I'm going to take you off the cheese and some other thing. And after 30 days, he had the cheese. He laid on in bed. And some just started to dance. The man get up, put on his clothes, and run and come and find me. And he says, Brother Luke, can a dead man rise again? Why? Let me tell you something. I don't know what happened. When you take the cheese out, everything rises. Because of the cheese, arteries to the heart was blocked. 
His heart had dropped down, the heart function dropped 25 to 30 percent. The man can barely walk from here to a few of the chairs. He decided to tighten on his diet. After he tightened up his diet, guess what happened? He decided also to not to take any cholesterol oil medication. Since in no time, when they went back, the heart functioned back to normal. He's alive today. Amen. Elder Daniel, you remember you saw him the other day when we were in Trinidad? We were doing the program together. Elder Weaver, you remember we were there with him? Amen. He's alive today. But guess what? He had to change his diet. After one week, he started to walk comfortably. Increasing function of the heart and constant improvement. Saints, listen. All I'm asking for is the fish, the chicken, the turkey, beef, pork, shrimp, lobster, conch, crab, butter, eggs, ice cream, cheese, and animal milk. That's all. Just those few little items. You give those items to me, you sit back and watch the glory of God. Let me ask you a question, Elder, because you just came. If the water is coming out, the pipe is on. Okay, everybody listening? The pipe is on. The water is coming out of the pipe into the sink. There's a stopper in the sink. And the water is flowing out of the sink onto the ground. Should I grab a mop and start mopping up or what should I do in its order? Okay, take the stopper out. What's next? What about, follow me here, saints. What about going to the source... First, which means turning off the stopper first. Unplugging the sink, and then I mop it up. You know what I found that most individuals tend to do? They like to mop and have not yet gone to the source. Tonight, in a systematic manner, we're going to go to the source, and we're going to turn off everything. Some people say, Brother Luke, we can do the fish once in a while. Saints, you know, hear the Bible say about a dripping faucet? Nothing more irritating than a dripping faucet. I'm a big believer of turning off everything. Shut it down. Listen, we just came out of a hurricane in Antigua. Elder Daniel, Elder Weaver, they can testify. Right when the hurricane is about to approach, they shut down all the electricity on the island. Because the last thing you want is live power lines on the ground in the midst of a crisis, in the midst of a flood. All I'm asking you, shut down all the power line in the body right now. We're going to get rid of all the cholesterol item in the, um, from a dietary standpoint. If that's clear, you guys say amen. 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 The Bible says, whether therefore he eat or drink or whatsoever he do, do all to the honor and glory of a holy God. Eliminate all flesh and their byproducts, all dairy, all fried foods. By the way, whenever you're dealing with cholesterol issue, no oils. Absolutely no oils in the diet. Because just a tidbit of oil will also damage the inner lining of the blood vessel. No oil. We're going oil free. No sugar. Sugar increases triglycerides, as well as people who like to juice, beet juice or carrot juice, increase the triglyceride. Triglycerides combined with cholesterol causes a heart attack or stroke. All caffeine has to go. Remove all processed and refined item, including, listen to this, gluten-related item. No wheat, barley, rye, and we're going to pull oats. The reason being, we found that these foods that are not organic, the genetically modified foods, they do increase the LDL particles that can actually cause blockage of the arterial wall. So you cannot go to Tesco and these other places and buy the pastries and the bread and the different things. We're going to remove those items. Am I making sense, saints? Because they do increase the LDL particles. Olives, it helps remove the plaque from the arterial wall. 
Increase your fiber, fiber-rich food. Your grains, your brown rice, your oats, you know, all those items, fruits, grains, nuts, all those good things we're going to increase. We're going to eliminate all the Western diet. Saints, almost every corner I go, I think, I thought I was in the U.S. Same type of things that affects the arteries in the U.S. Same things you guys have over here eating. My recommendation, let's give those items up. You see those milkshakes and the ice cream? It actually makes your blood fatty for the next four hours after consumption. I will show you a picture at the beginning of the presentation of what happens to your blood after the consumption of a milkshake or ice cream or any of these items after the consumption. Remind me before I close to show you that picture. Saints, I'm going to pause right here. I'm going to pause right here. You're going to have to give me another grace. You got to come back tomorrow for the rest. Because I really want to give you the healing. I don't want to rush through the healing. And I want to give you the specific treatment to actually deal with this. And here's what I'm going to do. The handouts. If you grace me, I'm going to give you handouts with all the notes. That you'll be able to systematically put things together. And it gives you an opportunity to bring a friend again tomorrow. As soon as I'm finishing, finished with this, I'm going straight into diabetes. Okay? So tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead. I'll go finish up this. Go straight into diabetes. And I'll hand you a handout on this topic. And I'll tell you what. You'll be amazed when you see how we put this thing together. Now, saints, let me ask you. Was the information helpful? Are you guys beginning to see the power of plant? Yes. Amen. I just wanted to come and see, see my friend. Uh, let me just ask my friend to come and say hi to God's children. Elder, just come up and say hi to God's children. While he's coming, allow me to quickly show you what happens to that blood vessel when you eat the shake. You guys want to see this? And you guys can go right ahead and we're going to do the theme song. Look at that. You see what that blood vessel looks like? Not the blood vessel, you see what the vial looks like? You see what happens at the top? That's what happens when you drink a milkshake or eat ice cream. Every time you eat it, this is what it does to the blood. Sugar, milk, and eggs combined, this is what it does to the blood. It makes, leaves the blood fatty for the next four hours after consumption. That's exactly what it does. Am I making sense here, saints? Yes. 